Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. I just had, just had to put Luna outside. Uh, for some reason, when I sit on this table or th on this couch, and uh, uh, by the way, this couch is the couch of divorce guys. Like, I'll, I'll show a picture of it later on Twitter. Like, if you have this couch and you're a divorce guy, or if you don't have it, are you really even divorced? Um, but uh, she start when I sit down here. She decides this is just like. This is the relaxation area, and she starts noisily licking herself, so I had to put her outside. But anyway, Ironside's graphic novel, uh, I've got 12 days left. I said I was going to um, add the second uh, chapter. <laughs> I'll probably do that over the weekend, but I'm going to do a lot more um, like tweets. This is going to be a lot of lettering this weekend. So as I letter and I do like a cool panel, I'll share it, I'll share it on Twitter, and you see it. And uh, uh, so just about to hit 60,000. Oh, Mim Hedrum. Love Mim Hedrum. Oh my gosh, he jumped up in subscribers. That's awesome. I, he's got the best channel. Like, you just, you just look, even like the... I kind of want to know how he does these letters. Like, he does, he does a really good job on titles and images for the video. Um, I don't do that well on images, but I really, really think about, about my titles. So he does really good ones. So... I'm really glad he's jumping up. Sometimes people are good and they just kind of like level off and you're like, why? Why are, why are they leveling off? Like, um, but he did this one where he talked about, he did the Titans um, trailer and he said, this is the end of geek culture. Whereas my, I literally, my title was, this is the end of the road. So we basically came to the same conclusion that this is, we've, we've, we've you know, this is a, what is that guy? Shel Silverstein, where the sidewalk ends. We're where the sidewalk ends. Um, but uh, damn, he's done like three. I want to watch all of these. Foodies get out. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyway, um, so I changed. I waited until I had a little bit more. And uh, then I remembered. Then uh, as you can see, you saw from the uh, the image for the video. is Somebody did this Teen Titans, except for it wasn't Teen. Well, there's a show called Titans. And then they, they, did a, they took like these random characters. Um, one of the characters from Kick-Ass 2. Uh, a, a random Power Ranger, <laughs> the girl from Leon, the professional, and then I don't even know who they got for Star Starfire. It's pretty funny. I was like, this is really like, this is the Pose Law of superheroes. So, for people who don't know Pose Law, Pose Law is, and again, <laughs> it's funny, there's the general understanding of something, and then when you look it up, it's not exactly the same. So, um, Pose Law is actually supposed to be for ex um, mocking extremists. Um, but, uh, it basically says without a hint that something is parody, you cannot tell par you can't tell the difference between parody and the thing being parodied. Um, so anyway, uh, recently Marvel, uh, Marvel has a, um, a, uh, series based around, uh, not having any white straight men in it. That's basically what the team is. Um, uh, it's called Marvel Rising. Which is weird uh, because the the elephant in the room is this is all of the failing characters. These are the low selling characters uh, repurposed into uh, one series. Uh, you're doing the same thing with West Coast Avengers. Oh, by the way, West Coast Avengers by Kelly Thompson. Check out the video I did about that. I had some friends who say that was probably one of your best videos. Um, the new thing is to make everything a limited series because they know SJW writers and characters can't sell anything. So they'll announce it and it'll be kind of vague. Is this a limited series? Is it ongoing? And then they're like, oh, it's a limited series, but it's going to come back. So West Coast Avengers is a limited series. Um, uh, Kelly Thompson just got Jessica Jones, and that's a limited series. Um, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to go through both of these. And um, we're going to see how... Um, it's not even really that you're going to get that angry or excited. It's that you're just going to get bored. So I guess I'll start. Since I got two of these, I'll, I'll go with these. They're both like an, one minute. So this is Sneak Peek at Marvel Rising BFHF. Get ready for the first legendary team-up of Ms. Marvel, Tippy Toe, and Squirrel Girl! BFHF! Okay, so... One of the things I got to say is that Marvel Rising is not billed as a comedy series. It's basically billed as a straightforward superhero uh, series. And as you can see, the animation is actually pretty close to the level of their last, you know, four 
um, Spider-Man. Yeah, basically, Disney HD, every year they'll have a different Marvel show. Um, and uh, they've usually been Spider-Man, but now they're trying this out. Um, but it's not comedy. The problem is that SJWs focus on people who don't like comics. <laughs> it's a very, very strange thing to do. Like, it's like we're, we're rebooting the NFL for people who don't like sports. What? Um, so they realized that most people, um, I was just talking to someone and they go, isn't this all kind of petty? And I go, well, it's petty to you because you don't care about superheroes. If you cared about it, it's important. Um, SJWs focus on people who don't like superheroes, specifically people who think superheroes are stupid. So they do silly billy stuff like this. Mind you, again, they've tried out this tactic in comics and it's been an utter failure for four or five years. Like, they know it doesn't work. Best friend heroes forever. <laughs> what? Hello? Who are you again? Just give up peacefully. If you're really innocent, it's time to stop running and prove it. Okay, so, number one. <laughs> wow, that was emotional blackmail coming out of Kamala Khan. If you're running, you must be guilty. Maybe you're running because you're being chased. Um, second of all, uh, what does Kamala look like? <laughs> like, what is she supposed to be? At least she has black hair right now. They give her this weird brown hair in the comics that she's supposed to be Pakistani-American. Like, full-blooded, you know, genetically Pakistani, you know, but... What, what is she? <laughs> like, I get, she's no known race. She's, I would just call her minority. What is... What is your nationality? Oh, I'm a minority. We're from Minatoria. <laughs> it was this continent uh, and it disappeared. And then our, you know, our ancestors went to all the other continents. It's like, what race are you? That one. Um, but more specifically, if you heard her talking and what is Kamala Khan's personality? Now, I would say it's a multiple choice, but the problem is with multiple choice, one of them is supposed to be correct. With, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I read more Kamala Khan stuff than anyone. And I'm telling you, she has a completely different personality in every book. She's like, LOL, so random is in Miss Marvel. In The Champion, she's a complete ball buster. Um, in the Marvel Rising comic, uh, actually, she's closer to this. She's just like a very bland, nice girl. So the thing is, this character was only created like five or six years ago. One of the things you're doing in the first couple of years is you're defining the character's personality. Now, Peter Parker had a pretty consistent personality from the early 60s till about 15 years ago when Brian Bendis decided that Peter Parker was a cross between Ross and Chandler from the Friends TV show, which, which is popular at the time. But we're only five years in and we have at least three completely different concurrent takes it's not like two years ago, she was LOL so random. One year ago, she was a ball buster. And this year, she's a, you know, a, just a bland, nice girl. We're talking about the takes on her vary from week to week. If you're reading Champions, Marvel Rising, or Ms. Marvel. Um, now, there are changes in the character. And one of the forgotten things about Daredevil is for the first almost 20 years of his publication, yeah, let's say the first 15, his stuff was that he was a happy-go-lucky guy. He was a Daredevil. The, the ginchy, groovy daredevil, you know, like he was not this very tortured guy until um, it was actually the uh, writer before him. God, oh, I'm blanking on his name. I want to call him Pat Broderick, but that's completely wrong. Ah, oh, sorry. I went on a run. I'm so a little lightheaded. Um, but anyway, uh, okay, so let's get on. Now, if you'll excuse me, someone else was chasing me first, and it is so rude to cut line. And Biggin! Hey guys, do you remember when uh, they said in Biggin in that one episode of Simpsons 23 years ago? It's basically half of the so called appeal of this character. By the way, people with dark skin do not have fingernails that are the same color as their skin. This is computer animation. It is really, really easy to fill. It's literally a function to fill the fingernails with a slightly different tone than the skin, but whatever, nothing matters. Uh, uh, we're not going 
going to let you leave? That's what a lot of people think. You want to fight me, ladies? Take your best shot. Will Squirrel Girl and Miss Mom... Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, Ghost Spider actually seems pretty cool. She's got, uh, you know, uh, Ghost Spider is kind of like a, uh, a weird uh, backwards created character. It was a costume before it was a character, and then it was Spider Gwen, who I think called herself Spider Girl in that um, another timeline, and then she's in our timeline. But it looks good. Like, it legitimately is an excellent costume. And you see, there was about to be a little face off there, and it was kind of cool. Sp uh, you know, Ghost Spider, it's two against one, but she's very confident. A little cocky, so you're like, oh, cool. There's gonna be a little fight here. Let's see what happens. That's gonna get com immediately diffused by terrible LOL so random humor. We'll defeat their multicolored menace. Will Ghost Spider escape justice again? Find out next SG, week. What are you doing? I want. Okay, so what what are you doing? So uh, obviously this is not real life, which means this is all written. It was story boarded and approved. So the whole thing is that can we talk about how disgusting she looks? She's got she has literally has an upturned pig nose and forearms that are bigger than my thighs. What it, well, calves. Uh what it, what is this supposed to appeal to? Fat kids who want to stay fat like what what okay, so I was raising the dramatic tension but apparently we're in a rush. So <gasps> Oh, and there we go. We got a keyframe. Silly Billy. The two girls are ironically fighting. This is not comics. This is cosplay. This is where the sidewalk ends. We've come to the end. Um, comics is now 100% focused on people who don't like comics. <laughs> so it has become uh, a pseudo-ironic uh, pre-cosplay Story ideas? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this sash. Okay. So the other one that got a big uh, reaction was the Titans trailer. Titans is the Teen Titans, except for they're not Titans. I believe one of the actresses is in their 30s. Um, and uh, it has looked like a absolute mess. Uh, the one exception is they have a pretty cool Robin costume, but ooh, lad, I think this is the end. The funny thing is that when I saw this trailer, I said, this is the end of live action TV shows. And then they just announced that Jeff Johns is doing a Stargirl TV show, and you're like, no, st just stop. Can we just go back to, like, Kojak and Columbo and Mannix? Like, superheroes aren't super anymore. They're there, there's, there's, you know, you can graph this stuff, the success of something. Uh, the, the Batman movies. You got Batman, Michael Keaton, just Batman. Does great. Batman Returns actually did a little bit worse than Batman. Um, but that was mainly because they, they pumped up the violence and there was a big uh, pushback against that. Uh, if I remember correctly, Batman Forever did better because they added Robin. But then by the time you get to Batman and Robin... They added Batgirl, and then it slumped off. The same things happened with stuff like Arrow and its ratings. First season, you mainly just have Arrow. Second season, you got Arrow, Roy, and Black Canary. Third season, you got Arrow, and by the latest season, he's had his own team. And you have some characters who have been multiple versions of superheroes. So anyway, Titans is... Um, I think someone was saying it might be set in the movie universe, but... I don't think so. So let's just get this over with. I mean, start it. What is this? M-A? Oh, I forgot. Robin's going to say the F word. <laughs> what's, uh, what, what, did, what did that uh, Bleeding Cool um, writer say in that article? So this is a thing that happened? Okay, so that's a thing that's going to happen. Okay, so uh, it's the the Titans, except for they're they're not teens. They're from the age of fourteen to thirty-four. Everything led me here to you. You're the boy from the circus. You got 
So one of the problems here is it's just too much. I, I think they picked a really good kid to play uh, Robin. But um, we don't need any origins ever, ever again. I swear half the people who love Thor Ragnarok did not see the other two or they completely forgot them. Just tell a story. Like, we get it. Everyone knows that some superhero came from somebody died. And it's not even that this feels rote. This literally feels like... Like uh, 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 when I was growing up and going to Catholic school, like Stations of the Cross. It was like, it was this weird kind of state. Okay, this might get a little offensive, so I'll try to be respectful. But Stations of the Cross is basically, they, they put up these images of Jesus before he died. And the thing is, it takes forever. So if you're a kid and you're impatient, you're sadly and ironically kind of hoping that Jesus will hurry up and die. Like... The first time it's very big deal, but by the time you've done it 40th time, you're just like, why does this have to be so long? Like, it's it's just excruciating. That's what it feels like. It feels like these. This is like Stations of the Cross. So that actually looks uh, pretty cool. I don't know. I like that part. So when I thought this was going to be like some kind of thing focused on Robin, which I've talked about this movie Boy Wonder. Boy Wonder is, is obviously it's called Boy Wonder, and I don't know how they got away with that. But it's not sanctioned by DC. It's this pretty cool, kind of like a, almost like a Christopher Nolan take on Robin, and it's really, really good, and it's fallen down the memory hole. So if you ever get the chance to you know, buy it on YouTube movies or whatever, you're going to love uh, Boy Wonder. So I was like, oh, maybe they're doing like a Boy Wonder thing. No. Okay, when it's 2018 and you're writing a scene where there's a bunch of multicultural thugs in an alley who easily get defeated by karate foo, I just, just leave. <laughs> just go. Just go somewhere else. There's, there's other trades for you. There's, there's other industries. There's a, a VCR repair, vacuum cleaner repair. Uh, like they said in, in G.I. Jane, find life elsewhere. Okay, I know it's supposed to be like a pretty dramatic thing, and uh, I it could have been in that scene, like that whole scene felt like just brushing your teeth in the morning. Like there is nothing exciting about superhero fighting six people in an alley. It does not happen at all. Now an actual better one is if you pump it up a little bit more, that there's like 10 or 12. Robin jumps down there. He, start, he starts off, he's doing good. And then he starts to do bad. And then he's just about to get killed. And then they see the bat signal up in the air. And they think Batman's coming to save him. So they all run off. And then, as Robin's getting back up his feet, he says, F Batman. That could have been good. By the way, if you're looking at this screenshot, it's, it's just as cheap as it looks like. Like, this is embarrassing. Control. And that is, that's humiliating. So there was some um, pictures from, that were shot out on the street with Beast Boy and Starfire and Raven. And they looked terrible. And everyone laughed at the, uh, the actor, you know, the actors. And I felt bad for them. You know, you go to Hollywood, you're trying to get, just get, get whatever job before you run out of movie and you got to move back to Sheboygan. But they did all of the color corrections and the tinting and the lighting. And this still looks absolutely embarrassing okay i forgot the name oh oh god what's her name from pootie tang there's the prostitute character her name is like biggie shorty or something like that i think it's biggie shorty it's basically biggie shorty with some really really amateurish after effects Sometimes when I feel the darkness, 
to feel good. My mom. It's kind of funny when your stuff looks so bad that you have to make it so dark, it's almost a completely black screen. Like, this is one of the best uh, stills from the trailer. It's just a black screen. It's like, oh, that's not so embarrassing. Okay. okay. Says there's no such thing as monsters. I used to think that. I was wrong. I don't know why they took the Teen Titans out of there because this is... To me, only it's going to appeal to really young teens. We're like talking like 13 or so. Maybe even that's even 13, 14. That's about it. So, um, I mean, there's always, I mean, I, oh, I actually saw a guy dressed up like the question in not even the best, um, not even the best version of it. But I got to tell you, the question, a guy without a face is really striking and kind of spooky. It was in broad daylight in San Diego. He was spooky. So I always say that, man, if they ever did the question, that that could be like the Vic Sage question. I don't care. Like, I don't care. Like, it's the end of the road. This is where the sidewalk ends. If if you were to make a funny or die, which, by the way, are, are always funny, so that, sh that channel should be called or die. If you were to make a funny or die parody of Titans or that, um, what do you call it? The uh, Marvel Rising trailer. It wouldn't be distinguishable from the actual one. First, you got silly Billy humor for for people who don't even like comics, and then you got every overly dramatic cliche combined with a, a crackle level budget. Should we watch this one? Eh, it's a little longer. I might give up on this one. This is like the full trailer. Our first superhero team up. My hero was okay, so literally the first thing they do is is ironic pseudo, or pseudo comics. She's excited about her team up. Why is she excited about a team up? Because team up is something that people who read comics talk about. So she's simultaneously in the world and out of the world, which brings us completely out of the world. the perfect foe. Someone just marked Ghost Spider fighting a couple blocks away. What better first mission than bringing in an ex? Superhero. Okay, one, we don't know that she went bad. It could have always been a clone. Two, either way, I am so mad. Okay, she's squeen, and soon she will be reen. By the way, what are, what are these costumes? I understand that everything is designed to uh, defeat the male gaze, which means you know, uh, men are never supposed to look at women. They're not supposed to be attracted to them, but women still don't want to look like idiots. This is like how people dress on Sesame Street. And we are 22 seconds in and we got a fat girl talking about food. And she's going to say something like, yes. Yes! Uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's the reaction. Everyone's so caught up in dishing out punishment they never thought to ask if I was actually guilty. If you're really innocent, it's time to stop running. Who are you again? <laughs> what? Okay, so honestly, I think the ghost spider looks cool. And uh, it seems like she's giving an actual story. Oh, look, it's politically correct group of friends. Um, why does she have the Heather Antos hairstyle? Like, how, <laughs> how many layers of inappropriate is this? Okay, whatever happened to you? I was chased by a SWAT team for six city bucks. Duh. <laughs> Get ready for the first legendary team up. So I really want to see Ghost Spider beat them both up. I don't think it's going to end like that. And begin! Yeah, they say it and begin. That's... What can you... <laughs> What else do you got left? She has no personality, and that's literally the only thing. Okay, we got Gordon Good Brother. Yeah, nobody cares about Patriot. This one's weird because people actually like Chloe Bennett. Um, <laughs> I think she's dating Logan Paul right now. But um, I like how when they do, like, since this is obviously a purse puppy petting zoo, uh, Chloe Bennett is Asian, um, but she kind of looks mixed. No, no, you gotta, 
What every cliche, you know, the blue hair tinged Asian girl, by the way, look that up. Blue and blue and purple uh, tinges on hair. There have been literally dozens of Asian desi designs. It's a complete cliche. So let's go on some more. Oh, that, I got to go back up because this is very interesting. We have a traditionally feminine and pretty girl on the left. And then we got, remember Batman year one? Remember Batgirl year one? We basically have Gail Simone year one on this side. Yeah, this is, and she's got a quarry in her hand. The dramatic tension, but apparently we're in a rush. So keyframe. Oh, they just really proud of that one. Oh yeah, the song. Teamwork, Ghost Spider. You got it, Gordon. Good brother. Oh, are you Asian? I could tell because of the purple on the end of your hair, like every other female Asian design. Yeah. Captain Stacy's own daughter? Who can you trust? By the way, that's not how you take off a mask. She pulled on the front of it and it just came off. Yeah, Gordon Goodbrother got taken out. Take your best shot. Watch me rise. Stop that! Why are you like this? I'm so serious right now. Oh wow, she's really persistent. Oh, so the fight between them ended up with silly Billy shenanigans. Anyway, uh, I've got to, I'm kind of pissed because <laughs> I docked the hell out of myself, so I got to go uh, edit that stuff. This is a non-editing channel, and I have to edit. That stuff. <sighs> I'm getting a little angry. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Oh, sorry, I didn't give you a clap warning. Uh, subscri subscribe. Make sure you're still su subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone who gives a super chat. The Patreon and the Indie Go goes. You've seen a lot of new stuff from Iron Sights in the last uh, week or so, and uh, I'll have uh, I'm going to the comic shop uh, later this afternoon, so I'll get the new comics from this week. Thanks for watching. Bye.